Okay, look here. Huh? We are going to draw this. The idea is exactly the same. Before you start your drawing, what is the first thing we identify? A, B, C. Oh, always start with A, B, C, the amplitude. What's the value of the amplitude here? 3. So this tells you that the maximum value will be 3. What will be the minimum value? Negative 3. What is by B? What does this one tell you? One complete cycle. In 360. It's always 360 or 2 pi, ah, but for today we only deal with degree. Do we need to be worried about C? No, because this is plus zero. So no need, this is the most basic question. I want to say this again. I know you are smart, but you need to be a little bit more intuitive. This is three. So most of your logical, oh, just now Mr. Liu say two. So two margin. Three means three margin. I need to let you know, ah, what if this value become one? One margin is very small. So by default, ah, I would like everyone to use two margin by default. Because one margin is too small already. Sometimes I cannot see. Okay? Next. Three margin, not necessarily must be three. Up to you. I can say, oh, maybe I don't want three margin. I want one and a half. Meaning, every margin represents two units. You can do that. I'm flexible about it. Let's say I'm going to do that. So I'll just put three here. If I put three here, Negative 3 will be another one and a half margin below. But please, no need to label 1, 2, 3, everything. Why? You are wasting your time. I only need to see the key values. And don't go and put dotted line along your margin. Please don't do that. Huh? Now, we are ready to plot, provided our 360 degree must be divided into how many parts? How many parts? Four. Don't use 1 cm, too narrow. Use 1.5. You want 2 cm, you can go ahead. Equal interval. Please use your ruler to measure. Now you are very hard working. You will definitely write everything out. But in the long run, so long you know these are the four different quadrants. Huh? Okay, two key values is good enough already. Now use the calculator. Just now, sine will always start from zero. If you remember yesterday, I said cosine will always start from one. 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 But do you think you have one here? Why not one? Three. Because you need to multiply by three. So we will start with the maximum value. Don't believe go and press cosine zero. Times three, you will get three. Same thing. I'm going to put a dot. After the maximum value, where do you think it will come down to? Zero for the next interval. After zero, the minimum value, not three, huh? negative three. Don't know? Press the calculator. After the minimum value, it must go back to zero. After that, it will go back to the maximum. Okay, yesterday I alerted you. When we draw the cosine graph, what must we do before we start drawing? You must remember the end points, which is the maximum and minimum, they are curved. So don't draw like this is a straight line down. You must imagine there is a curve. So what do I do? I'm going to join them together now. You must imagine there's a curve here. Then I turn. Same thing, imagine there's a curve, then you turn. Anything extra, you just erase. Can you see? There is a deliberate attempt that there is a part of a turning point at the maximum point over here. Then, after that, you will label. Yes. Why the wave like very short? Because this particular wave is still a full wave, but your wave is from here to here. Four quadrants, one way. But this is different from your sine graph. Your sine graph started from zero. Your cosine graph started from here. So what you see of the cosine graph is actually from this part 
to this part of the side graph. So don't be confused. Don't believe you go and check the diagram two pages before. Alright? 